If you're looking for a fast and easy way to paint the new snow troopers from Star Wars Legion and you still want them to look great, I'll show you how. That's coming up. Hey guys, Jared here from Mini Junkie. So I wanted to show you how I painted the new snow troopers for Star Wars Legion. Uh, they just came out recently. Really cool models um, and honestly really easy to paint if you use a few different um, techniques that I'm going to show you here today. Sometimes they're called harsh environment troopers uh, which I think is great um, because mine for example I'm doing more as like a sand trooper type of look um, and in fact my bases are desert bases to match the rest of my force. Now this technique isn't going to win any awards, it's not going to look spectacular up close, but from three feet and from gaming distance, they're going to look terrific. And most importantly, well at least for a lot of us, because they're troops and you're going to need a few of them, or potentially a few units, or you know maybe you just enjoy painting your characters more, this you know is a fast and easy technique and you can create, you can output a lot of them in a short period of time. The most important part of the technique is how to get that white armor looking crisp and clean but also shadowed in the right ways um, matte in some areas shiny in others really nailing the white armor of the imperial units is what makes or breaks the look of the unit in my opinion so this technique while easy can also be applied to the regular stormtroopers that come in the core box or in the expansions or even to the scout troopers basically any imperial unit that uses a white ceramite style armor you can use this technique okay that's enough of me talking let's go to the paint table and i'll show you how to do these here's a couple of unflattering close-ups of what the models will end up looking like and here's a look at the unit as a whole one of the most important steps is going to be to prime them entirely in white uh, you could use an airbrush you could use a spray primer you can try and use a brush on, although a white brush on primer is going to be tough to apply. So I would probably go with like a GW Corax white, which I realize is a bit grayish, but I think it would still do the trick. For each of the troops, you want to make sure you cover them entirely. Make sure you get up under the cre creases, under their arms, things like that, and just uh, one smooth white coat all over. Now you're just going to give it a heavy wash using Seraphim Sepia Shade from Games Workshop. Uh, just brush it over anything that's cloth, including the boots, the sleeves, the gloves, uh, that coat in the back, uh, avoiding the armor and any of the gear, the shoulder pads, the helmet, the backpack, things like that. You want to avoid um, getting any of the seraphim sepia on those. I showed this on a couple of troops just because I realized um, it might be helpful for you to see where I applied it. Um, but it's, again, I mean, this is a really straightforward step. Uh, so I'm probably showing it to you longer than I really even needed to. It's very um, obvious what you need to do here. Just let that dry completely before the next step. So yeah, when that's dry, take some Vallejo Game Ink Black and just paint it right over the gun. Uh, be as neat as you can. Take your time. Use a smaller brush. Uh, and just it's really straightforward you're just think of it as glazing but you're just painting right over the gun even though it's primed white what will happen is some of the edges will show through almost like a highlight um, and it, if it's too gray and it didn't quite cover enough just let it dry a little bit and go over it with a second coat of the ink it's a very fast step very easy to do and very forgiving um, whereas the you know if you get a little bit of it on the white armor it's fairly easy to wick it off very quickly with your brush or just paint over it later whereas a heavy opaque black paint would definitely mess up your white armor and, and the white cloth and stuff um, and be more difficult to fix that's why I recommend using the ink here And again, just to give you another example of how to, how I did this, I'm applying the ink also to the, I guess, hose of this weapon. I'm not sure what that is, but same principle, just applying it over the white, and it leaves a little bit of a gray highlight on each of the ribbed portions. But um, And then the overall larger gun, I also applied the black to. Every part of the weapons is done with this black technique. When that's dry, take your favorite white. I used P3 Moro White and just tidy up any of the white armor and equipment uh, that you might have got other paint on. For the next step, use your preferred method to gloss varnish the entire model across the entire unit. Just 
gloss them, gloss them completely. When the gloss is dry, you want to apply one part dark tone to two parts uh, quick shade mix, and this is Army Painter brand. And you want to just mix that up good and apply it to all the white areas, uh, including the cloth on the front of his face. Literally everything you left white now gets this wash. If you don't have Army Painter, the next uh, alternative I would recommend would be um, Games Workshop Null Oil Gloss mixed with some of their Lamian Medium. Probably, again, one part to two part, or you could do 50-50 and see how that goes for you. As you're doing this, you want to wick off any of the parts where it starts to pool too heavily with your brush. Just kind of apply the tip to where it's pooling and it'll soak it up. And you can even use your fingertip to wipe it off. Um, if it's not dried yet, you can wipe off areas where you want it to show through really, really white. Uh, and it's a quick way of sort of, let's call it highlighting the shade. For the eyes at first, I tried to use black ink and it, it was terrible. So I'd recommend taking like a shade. So here I'm using that dark tone um, right out of the bottle and just kind of pool it in the eyes. The eyes are actually recessed nicely, so it should be easy to fill them in and make them dark. For this next step, I recommend um, brushing on matte varnish and just apply it to all of the sepia colored areas of the model. And I also used it on the white cloth on the front of his face, which I don't think is meant to be shiny. The stuff that I showed you, the Airbrush Premium, can actually be hand painted really, really nicely. It works perfect. Here's what it looks like when that's dried. It's very nice and matte. It looks like cloth and not like shiny plastic. And the final step is the exact same thing, but use gloss varnish and apply it to all of the armor, the top of the helmet, the, you know, the shoulder pads, and even the backpack. Once that gloss dries, you're finished and just need to uh, do your base and you're done. Here's a look at the finished unit. I'm ro rotating it, so hopefully you can maybe see some of the gloss effect on there. Uh, the basing I'm using is the same as the rest of my Imperials, which is a very easy and quick and fairly basic um, desert theme. I'll link to that video here. You can see that in the top corner. Um, and of course, you could always apply tufts and rocks and, you know, dress that up a little bit. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it works for you. Post below in the comments if you're going to give it a shot and if it worked. But thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.